everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss bounded sets in Rn. This is going to be the first portion of this discussion. We will recall what are bounded sets in R. We will define Rn and the Euclidean norm in Rn. And also we will discuss properties of the Euclidean norm. And both of these will be supplemented by illustrations and examples in R2 and R3. And finally, we will define bounded sets in Rn. And just in case you were wondering, in the second part of this discussion, which will be a separate video, we will give examples of bounded sets in Rn, and we will also discuss how to prove that a set in Rn is bounded. So let us recall that a set S, that is a subset of real numbers, is bounded if there exist uh, two real numbers, a and b, such that every element of S is between these two numbers, a and b. So here we see on this picture a set S that is depicted in blue, and it is uh, bounded by two numbers, a and b. So basically every set of real numbers uh, that is inside of some finite interval is bounded. So we can rewrite this definition in such a way that it's easier for us to generalize it to the case uh, where we are dealing not with the set of real numbers, but with Rn. So our goal is to generalize this definition to the case when we are, uh, when we are dealing with a subset of Rn. So um, suppose I'm, I'm, I have a situation where zero is here. Uh, so if, if I, I'm dealing with a set S that is bounded by two numbers A and B, uh, and if they are positioned in, in, in this way, I can easily uh, say that the set is contained in uh, the interval from negative B to B. So this set S is inside the interval negative B to B. But this is equivalent to saying that for every x in S, if, if, I have a, if I take an element x in the set S, then the distance from that element x to 0 is going to be less than b. So the distance from this element x to 0 is the absolute value of x, and it is going to be less than b. So um, this inspires an, another definition of a bounded set. So a set S, that is a subset of R, is bounded if there exists an, a number B greater than 0, such that for every X in S, absolute value of X is less than or equal to B. Okay, so this is another definition of bounded set, and it's easier for us to generalize this definition to the case of Rn. So since in this video we are going to be talking about bounded sets in Rn, let's just recall briefly uh, what is Rn, and in case you have not seen what Rn is, you are actually going to be under uh, be able to understand very easily what is Rn from this very uh, quick explanation. So R2 is the Cartesian product R cross R. And if you haven't seen this sign before, don't worry. All it means is that it's just a set of pairs, x1, x2, where each one of the, the two numbers, x1 and x2, is, is a real number. So basically, we can imagine R2 as the plane. Uh, and so every point on the plane can be described by its two coordinates, which we call x1 and x2. So the ordered pair x1, x2 simply tells us the position of the point on the plane. And if we consider all of the ordered pairs x1 and x2, we are basically going to take into account all the points on the plane. And so R2 is nothing uh, else but the plane. So we can identify R2 with the plane.
So similarly, R3 is a Cartesian product, R cross R cross R, and it is simply a set of all triples of numbers, of real numbers, uh, that look like this, x1, x2, x3, where uh, uh, each one of the, of the three numbers, x1, x2, x3, is a real number. Uh, and so again, we can uh, imagine as R3 as the three-dimensional space, and so if you look here at this point P, you can see that the location of this point is described by these three coordinates, x1, x2, and x3. So basically, if we look at all of the triples x1, x2, x3, where uh, each one of the coordinates is a real number, uh, we are going to exhaust all of the points in the space, in the three-dimensional space R3. Similarly, Rn is Cartesian product of R with itself n times, and it consists of the points such that each point has n coordinates, and each coordinate is a real number. So an important concept in Rn uh, is the concept of the norm. Uh, so if we have a point x with coordinates x1 through xn, the norm of the point x uh, in Rn is defined as the square root of the sum of the squares of the coordinates of the point. So for example, if we are talking about R2, if we have a point x with coordinates x1, x2, then the norm uh, of this point is going to be square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared. And so you may notice that this is actually the distance from the point x to 0. Because if you look at this triangle here, uh, it has sides x1 and x2. And so the hypotenuse of this triangle is square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared, which is exactly the norm of the point x. So the norm of the point x is distance from the point to the origin. And similarly, if we are talking about R3, if we have a point x with coordinates x1, x2, x3, then the norm of this point is going to be square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared. And if you use the Pythagorean theorem twice, you will be able to see that the norm of x is exactly the distance from the point x to zero, so it's the length of this segment right here. Okay, so the norm of the point x is again the distance from x to zero. And so um, these two examples, they give us an intuitive understanding of what the norm of the point x is in Rn. So whenever we talk about the norm of a point in Rn, we can think about it as the distance from the point to the origin. So let us consider some properties of the norm in Rn. So by the way, uh, this is a typical way of denoting the norm. So if when you put a dot in the middle, uh, it, you're just talking about the norm in general. Um, so the first property that we want to mention is that for every x in Rn, the norm of the point x is always greater than or equal to zero. And if we go back to the definition of the norm, it is obvious uh, just from the definition uh, because square root of the sum of squares is always greater than or equal to zero. The second property that we are going to discuss is that whenever we take a point in our Rn, um, the norm of this point is going to be equal to zero if and only if the point is at the origin. This actually can be confirmed by our understanding that the norm of the point x is the distance from x to 0. So the only way for the distance from x to 0 to be 0 is when x is at 0. Uh, the third property is called the triangle inequality. So if you look over here, that's the actual inequality. So if you have never seen before uh, what is x plus y, when x has n coordinates and y has n coordinates, it is explained here that x plus y is the point that is obtained by adding up the appropriate coordinates of the point x and the point y, right? So if the point x has coordinates x1 through xn and the point y has coordinates y1 through yn, then x plus y has coordinates x1 plus y1 
x2 plus y2, and so on, xn plus yn. So um, this is the triangle inequality. So if we try to compute the norm of the point x plus y, it's going to be always less than or equal to the, the norm of the point x plus the norm of the point y. And this can be illustrated by this example over here. So um, uh, the example is done in R2. So let's just assume that the point x is over here. Uh, and the point y is over here. If we take this segment over here and translate it to this segment here, then the point x plus y is actually going to be here. And so you can look at this triangle ABC in here. And so it is clear that um, AC is less than or equal to AB plus BC. But AC is equal to um, the norm of X plus Y because it's the distance from the point X plus Y to zero. AB is equal to the norm of X because it's the distance from X to zero. And BC is equal to the norm of Y because we actually obtained the segment BC by translating this segment over here. Uh, and the length of this segment is the distance from the point Y to zero. So this is how the triangle inequality can be illustrated. And now finally, if we have a point X with coordinates X1 through Xn, and if we have a real number alpha, we can define alpha x to be the point with coordinates alpha x1 through alpha xn. And so it turns out that the norm of this point alpha x is the absolute value of alpha times the norm of x. And we can illustrate it again uh, using this example. So if x is a point over here, uh, then 2x is going to be um, a point depicted there, right? So you, you may notice that the length of this segment is twice the length of this segment, which, is, which can be written that the norm of 2x is 2 times the norm of x. And so now after we have discussed what is Rn, we can finally formulate what it means for a set in Rn to be bounded. So let's just recall one more time the definition of a bounded subset of real numbers. A subset of real numbers is bounded if there exists a positive number such that every element of our set has absolute value less than that number. And so similarly, a set in Rn is bounded if there exists a positive number b such that Whenever we take an element of the set S, the norm of the point X is less than or equal to B. And so this definition finishes our discussion just for this video. In the next part of this discussion, in uh, video part number two, we are going to give some examples of bounded sets in Rn. And we are also going to discuss how to prove that a set in Rn is bounded. So this is all for this video. Um, thank you for watching it. Uh, please uh, give it thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, please subscribe to this channel to support this work and be good at math.